you know, we can't decide, hallelujah. But 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 after we graduated high school, we both got on the same team now. We, we both got on the bloodstained banner team now. Hallelujah. And we only play for Team Jesus now, y'all in the room. And I'm so glad that God has the ability to take a rival and turn him into a brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, when you really got the Holy Ghost, God will make your rivals become your friends. Amen. And he'll use both of y'all to bring him glory. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise. We're just excited to be here. Just excited to be here. We're going to go to the word of the Lord today. Not going to be labor of the time. Amen. Certainly glad. Apostle, thank you for the opportunity. And Pastor, thank you for the opportunity to stand before your great people. Such a fantastic and beautiful house. Amen. That the apostle has set up for you guys to work and minister to the Lord. And so we thank God for that. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Haggai. Amen. To the book of Haggai. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Now, I know God has something special. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I've been using this laptop for weeks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Using it for weeks. And today the program won't come up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to have to preach. Amen. Out of my prophetic unction today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It ain't scared either. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why the Bible said you got to have the word in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and my mom always told me, even when we got technologically, we begin to use technology and things of that. She said, she said, baby, I always carry your Bible. She said, because the battery don't go out in this. <laughs> and this will come up, whether that come up or not, you'll have your Bible. Amen. So if you have your Bible, go to the book of Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a word for the Lord from the Lord for the people of God. Amen. And, and we thank God for the word of the Lord. Amen. Again, so glad to be in the house one more time. Amen. We're going to go to Haggai chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse number 1. Hallelujah. Haggai chapter 1, verse number 1. I don't know if it is your custom to stand for the word of God. If it is, you may do so. Amen. At this time, as we prepare to read the word of the Lord. Amen. And you'll find these words in the book of Haggai. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, <clears throat> the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Shiltel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Look at your neighbor and say, Consider your ways. You have so much, verse 6 declares, and you bring in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earn wages to put them in a bag with holes. My God. The saith the Lord of hosts. Now, God is not a God. He speaks so powerfully that, that he shouldn't have to repeat himself. But here, take note that God repeats himself. The Lord says in verse 7, consider your ways. Look at your name and say, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, said the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I... I blew it away, said the Lord. Why, said the Lord of hosts, because my house is in ruins. And while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth withholds its fruit. For I call for a drought on the land and the mountains and on the grain and on the new wine and on the oil and whatever the ground brings forth on men and livestock and on all the labor of your hand. Take your neighbor, stop rebuking the devil. Stop rebuking the devil. God calls this fashion. Yeah. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I must stop right there. Grab somebody by the hand if you can, and I want you to look at them like they owe you $20. I got my eyes on you, Pastor. Come on, grab somebody. I got to hold the mic. See, there you go. Look at them and say, Neighbor. The time. For excuses is over. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, you just made somebody mad. Grab another neighbor here, because we're going to have, Lord, have deliverance right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, the time for excuses is over. freedom of expression that I can declare in the midst of these young people what you would have them to say unto us. God, touch my mind. Bring me to a place of alignment now that I can speak clearly, God, what your spirit is saying to the church. Open up our ears that we may hear clearly, God, a word that moves us in from and moves us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Father, help us in this place. Lord, as we overcome every barrier set up by the enemy on today, God, I pray on this day that when we leave, we'll come in one way, but we'll leave out another way on today, God. Let us leave with deliverance in our hand, God. Lord, let us leave today with our minds made up, God, that what you have called us to do is what we're going to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and by your blood, we believe that it's already done. Come on, clap your hands if you believe and agree. Come on and shout amen. amen. With a strong voice, I want you to holler real big. No, no more excuses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more excuses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This word is significant to us because, because we have to realize, body of believers, that, that, that God has called us. Uh, as the scriptures have said, God has called us to be salt and light in the earth. Yeah. Amen. I want us to know and to understand today that for everybody who's sitting in this room on this afternoon, that God has a purpose for your life. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That God has something that he wants you to accomplish. He, he puts you in a place and he puts you in a position, amen, whereby he can pull out of you what he has deposited on the inside of you. The apostolic writer lets us know and he said that we have treasures in earthen vessels that the excellency may be of God and not of us. Amen. In other words, that, that when God breathed on Adam, he breathed on Adam and he put something in Adam that Adam gave to his son and his son gave to his son that all down through time when your grandmama met your granddaddy and your mama met your daddy and they got together and made you, even from that time even to now, God put something on the inside of you and me that only he can do. Amen. Hallelujah. And, 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 and we have a purpose, amen, for being here on today. Does anybody believe that you have a purpose for being in the house of the Lord on today? I want us to understand that you are not here today by accident. Glory to God. That we are not here today by happenstance. You are not. Amen. I don't care what your situation was. Glory to God that got you to this place on today. See, my brother has been through many issues in his life, but I want to tell you that nothing you have been through has been wasted. Everything that God has done in your life up until this present time has done it to get you here so he can get you to the next place in him. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to understand this because in our text on today, we're dealing with a people. We're dealing with the, the children of Israel who have come out of exile from Babylonian captivity. Amen. They have come home and God has allowed them to experience freedom now and they have come home and they started building the house of the Lord. They started working on the house of the Lord, man of God. And the Bible said that they, they, they did good at the beginning. And I hear Paul preaching over in the book of Galatians. He said, you did run well, but who have hindered you? You see, see, many of us, we if we were to be truly honest, hallelujah, after when we first get saved, anybody remember when you first got saved? Uh, yeah, when you when you first got saved, amen. You would beat the pastor to the church. When you when you first got saved, nobody didn't have to ask you to pray. Amen. When you first got saved, you would run all. I love to see that sister running around the building. I knew I was right at home when I saw somebody take off running. I grew up in a running church. Amen. Hallelujah. When you first got saved, remember how the fire was burning bright, and, and you could be at Walmart shopping for your milk, and you would hear somebody over on the towel aisle talking about the goodness of the Lord. And it seemed like the Holy Ghost would grab your buggy and you would find your way over there to see who we're talking about. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It was when the Holy Ghost would talk to you. He would talk to you late in the midnight hour. It would be two or three in the morning and you would be like, God, I got to go to work in the morning. How can I get a little rest when you, y'all ain't acting like I'm talking right today. When you first got your first works and God first set your soul on fire. Hallelujah. And all you needed was a good word to get you to running and clapping your hands. All somebody had to do was say, praise the Lord. And you were like, yes, sir. Ain't they all right, y'all? 
ain't gonna say nothing in here. But somewhere along the way, we lose our fire. And the thing that used to come easy to us, now we got to work for it. It is so. It is so, Pastor. Yeah, you used to. Yeah. We used to get excited at the first song, but now we don't move into the praise team. Lord have mercy. <laughs> We sing, we, we, we work our praises to death sometimes because, hallelujah, we up here singing and sweating and spitting on everything that again in our reach. And folks are sitting at the back of the church like they at the movie theater. Amen. How y'all ain't gonna say nothing here today? Hallelujah. They had come home and God had delivered them. But the Lord said they ran into this thing. It is a very slick trick of the enemy. Hallelujah. That keeps the people of God from destiny. And it is a thing called comfort. Hallelujah. I want to tell us on this afternoon that you can't really do the work of the Lord in your comfortable place. When God gets ready to use you, when God gets ready to take you higher, when God gets ready to elevate you to a new position, the first thing he'll do is snatch you up out of your comfort zone. He'll push you to a place where you say, God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. God will push you to a place where he'll scare you all over again. Where you'll say, God, I don't know how we're going to make this next step. He'll do you like Peter and take you to step out on nothing. And walk on the water. He'll do you like Daniel and say, Get into the lion's den and let me prove that I am God. And beside me, there is no other. Have you ever had God scare you to the degree where God made you start walking by faith and not by sight? Have you ever had God scare you to the degree where He tell, Oh, come on here, Abraham? He said, Abraham, I know you're 90 years old, but I want you to go make a baby for me. And many times when God calls us, brothers and sisters, we want to stay comfortable. Tell your neighbor, elbow your neighbor, say, God got a calling on your life. God got a calling on your life. God got a calling. I know we're here to celebrate ushers. Amen. Hallelujah. There's an anointing when you when you have a great text of grace to serve. Amen. It takes a grace to serve some other people. And that's why some people don't get elevated in the body of Christ. It's because we hide behind a title. We got more people, help me, Holy Ghost. We got more people called to apostleship and bishopric and prophecy and minister. Everybody comes into the house chasing the microphone, but you don't hear nobody saying, God called me to clean toilets. You don't hear nobody saying, God called me to vacuum the sanctuary. Oh, no. generation of people who want to be spectacular. But if I read my Bible correctly, when we stand before Jesus on that great day, he's not going to say, welcome in thou good and faithful bishop. He's not going to say, welcome in thou good and faithful apostle. He's not going to say, welcome in thou good, thou come on here. He's not going to say thou good and faithful prophet. He's not going to say good and faithful pastor. He's going to say, welcome in thou good and faithful Y'all help me preach. Can I preach for two seconds? Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, Oh, neighbor, if you are too good to clean the sanctuary, if you're too good to stack some chairs, if you're too good to clean the commode, you're too good to preach. Don't try to prophesy and don't try to lay hands on nobody until you learn how to serve. There's a promise that God has called the people of God to. 
to. Amen. And Moses began to make excuses for why he couldn't obey God. He began to make excuses. He said, well, Lord, I can't preach right and I can't teach right. And, and Lord, who am I that you should use me? And that's what they're saying here in the book of Haggai. Amen. Here in the book of Haggai, the Lord said, is it time for you to sit in your houses? Amen. Your paneled houses and the house of the Lord lie in ruins. I want to tell you that if you're a part of this ministry and you're a part of this vision, God didn't call the one leader of this house. Everybody, y'all ain't going to help me in here today. God didn't call the one leader in the house. He called apostles to lead the house. Everybody else that comes in the house is called to serve the house. And if you didn't come to serve the house, oh my, 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 my God. If you didn't come to push the vision, if you didn't come to hold up the woman of God, all right, Apostle. All right. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, you're here to push. Many times, God, Jesus, they say it's not time yet. It's not time. The Lord. I gotta go to work next week. Watch this. So I ain't got time to help apostle this week. Y'all help me here. I got some other stuff I got to do. So I can't be burdened with the ministry of the Lord. Hallelujah. But as soon as hell hits your house, you might, but okay, I'm gonna say it from a pastor's point of view. Why don't you call your boss? Why don't you call your manager? Why don't you call your supervisor? Let them go visit you in the hospital. Let them come and bury your family. Y'all be helping me in here today. We put God on the back burner because we want to remain in our convenient places. Come on, y'all, help me here. But then when warfare comes, see, you can always tell the people in warfare, they the one keeping pastor up at night. They the one texting at three in the morning. Pastor, you sleep. What you think I'm doing at three in the morning? Don't text me and ask me am I sleep. Why won't you in service on Sunday? I preach the word for your situation. I preach the word for your deliverance. I preach the word to get you out. your neighbor and say, neighbor, the time for excuses is over. Now look at your word here because I'm a word preacher. Come on, y'all. God, God is a God of priority. If you're taking notes, get that down because you got to get that. Tell your neighbor and say, God is a God of priority. In other words, if he is not first, <laughs> he got to, I'm going to say it another way God got to be first Listen to the Ten Commandments He said I am God and Hallelujah And ye shall have no other gods Before me What were they doing in Haggai God had already given them the victory God had already made them free God had already opened up their door And then they had the out and out audacity To go sit home And get blessed See one of the most dangerous places that you can ever be in your life is when God finally bless you. One of the most dangerous things that can ever happen in your life is for you to finally get what you've been praying for. Because you know what really happens when you get what you've been praying for. Many of us go sit down somewhere. Would you help us somebody say, don't get cute. All the cute people go to the other church. I'm looking for servants over here. Every once in a while, God put you in a place. Come on, ladies. Every once in a while, hallelujah, God will put you in a place where you got to snatch off them things you put on your eyes. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing here today. Every once in a while, you got to pull a girlfriend back into a, oh, what they call it. Hallelujah, you got to pull a girlfriend back. You got to roll up your sleeves. You got to kick off your red bottoms. Oh, y'all have to give God glory. You have to come on here. 
you. Every once in a while, you have to come to church, not for everybody to see your new suit, not for everybody to see your new tie, not for everybody to see your blessing, but I came in here with a mind to build the house of the Lord. I have never seen stilettos on a construction site. When you're going to build a house, you put on your Timberland boots. When you're going to build a house, you put on your t-shirt that you cut grass in. Come on, fellas. When you're going to build a house, you put on your tool belt. When you're going to build a house, you put on your jeans you don't mind getting dirty on. Well, can I help us in here today? You are in here to build the house. She got the blueprint. You are the workers. Build the house. No more excuses. Build the house. How about somebody say, I came to work today. But whatever your hands find to do, hallelujah, that means your hands got to be looking for something to do. And if she say there's nothing for you to do, watch this.
she correct you? Am I in the house? Some of us, before we get to our car, Set me down. Girl, what? what now, watch this. Let me tell you how the devil do it. Let me tell you how the devil do it. You know you were the one that sung the glory in last Sunday. If it wasn't for you, the church people wouldn't be coming. They ain't there for her. They there because they want to hear you sing. Uh, I'm losing the church. I must be preaching real good. I must be, I must be dealing with somebody devil in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and what you do, you will let somebody talk to you. Submit to 
somebody. And then they got to send you out to do the work of the Lord. You see, the problem that we have in the body of Christ is that some were sent and some just went. I'm, I, I'm a, you have to tweet that. Some were sent and some just went. And you don't want to follow nobody who just went nowhere. Because you need somebody who understands order. The Bible said that God is a God of order. Let things be done. Decent and The anointing flows. From what? What did she say from the So this is the hay. And she ain't poured nothing on you. You ain't carrying her oil. Whew, glory to God. You got your own vial of oil. Ah, come on here. Oh my God. You you birthed your own anointing out in the bedroom. How you gonna fast for three days and come out an apostle? The devil is a liar. How you come on here, somebody? How you gonna go throw out the cornfield and come out a prophet? Ain't nobody got time for that. The oil flows down. So much power from yeah. God. You prophesy better than the pastor do. Yeah, but I ain't called to lead. And if I prophesy better than them, that means God called me to watch their back. Oh my God. I'm called to help the pastor. Don't you try to drag me out of here to no foolishness. Yeah, my gift may be sharper, but she's the anointed woman of God. God Almighty. David said. was trying to kill David. He was trying to kill him. Watch this, y'all. And David, watch this, David had already been anointed king. If anybody had a right to have warfare with Saul, David had a right. But because David understood apostolic order, I think that's going to be my next book, Apostolic Order. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, watch this. His soldiers was like, David, yes. kill him. Yes. You killed the lion. You took the four skins of over 300 men, David. I know you can kill, folk. David, you're so anointed. But David said, I will not stretch my hand. Against the Lord, oh my God, against the Lord's anointing. Because if I come against the man that God chose, I'm not just coming against the man of God, I'm coming against God Himself. Yeah. Look at somebody like you're mad at them, say, I'm not going to let you talk me into no foolishness. that David had to kill the man of God. Help me, Holy Ghost. The man of God was, oh my God, he was in a place where he was revealed. He was in a place where he was exposed. Can I tell you what the Bible says? Hallelujah. The Bible says Saul, hallelujah, was uncovered. That means he was, uh, I got the microphone. Hallelujah. He was uh, uncovered. He was, he was, he was uh, uncovered. Hallelujah. Can I help you? Look at your neighbor. He was uncovered. Hallelujah. He was in a vulnerable place. And that's why we need good ushers in the house. Because when the woman of God is going forth. 
off. She is uncovered. She's exposing the spirit. She's walking in another dimension. She's hearing from God. And we need some ushers who can bring order to the house and tell the baby, sit down. Stop chewing your gum. Stop popping that gum in church. God is trying to speak. The ushers are called to keep the order in the house. Just saying. 
One of the worst things as a preacher is to be talking to folks who act like they ain't gonna do what you said no way. But when you begin to push your excuses aside, then you can receive the oil of the Lord from the woman of God. Is there anybody in the room today who's ready for your trial to end? I need a people who can stand up on your feet and say, neighbor, say your neighbor, say the seasons for excuses is over. Say, put on your work boots, put on your work gloves, say, get ready, because the work is going on. Somebody say yes, and when you start working, the oil will flow, and when you start working, the blessings will come and when you start working the heavens will open somebody give God a praise if you believe it right now at the end of the day body of believers some of you are taking notes and so I'm, I'm, I'm vacillating between a teacher and a preacher what I'm talking about is the ministry of helps Here's where we have missed the church up. And forgive us, Lord. We train on apostles. We train prophets. Come on, we train evangelists. We train teachers. We train pastors. But where's the help? Because the fact of the matter is this, that no vision comes to fruition without good help. Amen. Even the apostles in the book of Acts, the Bible said that the ministry had begun to grow. And I'm going to get out of your way. The ministry had begun to grow. And it was widows in the midst who were not being fed. All right now. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And they were trying to get the apostles Help me, Holy Ghost, yes. to go and serve yes. the widows. Yes. And the apostles said, I ain't going to serve no widows. Not that they were a butt. Come on. But right. their position said, That's right. I need to hear from God yes. and attend to prayer and the word. Am I right about that? Yes. Apostle, check me if I'm right. Am I right? Am I close? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that they elected men and people of God who were full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, Hallelujah. I need some Holy Ghost filled people. See, you think only prophets need the Holy Ghost, but you need to have the Holy Ghost as an usher. When you say welcome to church and they roll their eyes, it takes the Holy Ghost for you not to snatch girlfriend wig off. Ah! Take your neighbor and say, if you don't help, you need the Holy Ghost. MC 
and they got a word. No, that ain't what I told you to do. I told you to say, Sister Jones is coming to read the scripture. After that, Sister, come on here. Sister Watermill is coming to pray a prayer. Y'all, come on, everybody, stay with that. That's all we want you to do. We want you to keep the service. I don't need you to be laying hands on folks. I, we got a preacher, but we plan here to be here. We need y'all. Y'all ain't gonna help me here today. We don't need you to do all that. All we want you to do is keep the service. But what we see 
see there's a lot of people who come in here wanting to grab the mic and run and scream and express. That is so true. Who don't want to serve. So you're going to jump over my process. Even Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. Oh God, I got to get out of here. He said, I came to serve. Jesus was so humble that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Bible said that he ate with the disciples and then he took a towel and girded up himself and washed the feet of the disciples. And you mean to tell me that you are better than Jesus? Well, you want to heal folk, but you don't want to help nobody. You want to prophesy, but you don't want to clean nobody else. Lord, don't let me go no 
higher than my character will allow. Because I don't want to get up there and be preaching on some high place. Y'all ain't going to say that to hear. And then the news come back to North Carolina. Apostle Vander Williams fell into fornication. He fell into adultery. Come on, y'all. Come on, he's stealing $11 million from the church. Come on, here, talk back to me. He's he doing all kind of foolishness. He can get out. And, and what happens is everybody looks, looks bad on all of us. Yeah. 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 I ask the Lord, I said, Lord, don't take me any higher than my character. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. If my character's not improving, improving, let me preach to five people. Yes. Here's four of them right here. All right. Yes. And I'll be the fifth. All right. Come on, come on, come on. How many want God to shift your character? I got to get out of here. Come on, I feel the anointing. Come on, somebody lift up your hands. Come on, change me, God. Come on. Come on, come on. I want you to begin to cry out. The Lord said, I need to build a house, but the season of excuses is over. How many know you got some real issues down on the inside that you want God to deal with tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to build the Lord's house. I want you with your hands lifted to begin to open up your mouth, for real, for real, and begin to tell the Lord, work on me today, God. Lord, don't let me go higher than my character will allow. Lord, do a new work. Come on, somebody talk to God. This ain't about the work of a man. This ain't about the work of a woman. This is between you and God. Lord, don't take me any higher than my character will allow. Don't let me get sucked up in a gifting. Don't let me get sucked up in the pride. Lord, I know you got a work for me to do. Lord, I know you got a work for me to do. But God, I want you today. I want to hear your voice in the room. I want you to begin to open up your mouth today. Oh, Come on, somebody, begin to cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, for the next five seconds, begin to open up your mouth here. Hallelujah, and let the Lord deal with our spirits. The Lord said the season of excuses is over, but he's calling you to another dimension. He's calling you to another place. Somebody need to say, Lord, break me. Lord, break that pride out of me. Lord, let me be humble in your sight. Lord, let me stand before you. God, break every chain off of my life right now. Hallelujah. Come on, I need to open up your mouth here. Come on, deliverance is happening in this room right now. I feel the presence of the living God in this place. Come on, he's moving in you right now. For those who are serious about being elevated, for those who are serious about serving, let God break you so he can use you. Let God break you so he can elevate you. The Bible said promotion come from the Lord. Hallelujah. God said now is the time. Shift your excuses. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm ready, God. I'm ready to push my excuses aside. God, I want to get out of my comfort zone. Lord, I'm ready for you to do a new work in me. I hear the Lord saying I'm ready to do a new work in many of you. But if you hide in your comfortable places, hallelujah, you will deny my season. You will deny my hands. But you need to open up your mouth and cry out today. Lord, I'm ready for you to do a work in me. Lord, I'm ready for you to take control. I'll submit my gift to you, God. I'll submit to the woman of God. I'll submit to the anointing of the house. I'll submit to your will. I'll submit to your way, God. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. I feel it here. There's an army. You said it. Say, rising up. Come on, sing it again. Sing it again. Lift my hands to the Lord. Say, there's an army. Rising up. What's that army going to do? Come on, tell it, prophesy. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now for your spirit. I thank you for the anointing that moves us beyond our excuses. Father, I thank you for the shifting that is going on in this place right now. Lord, and for those chains where the enemy has, has been holding your people down. Lord, we decree and declare that every chain is being broken. Lord, and I thank you for the spirit of deliverance that resides over the lives of these people. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Now I'm going to get ready to give you a prophetic instruction for every chain that you've been praying to be broken. The Lord said in five seconds, I want you to open your mouth and shout. And when you shout, angels are going to begin to snap in chains. They're going to break chains off of your mind. They're going to break chains off of your spirit. They're going to break chains off of your bloodline. The Lord said, I'm cleansing bloodlines on today. I want you to begin to open up your mouth and shout right now. Open up your mouth and shout to the Lord. The chains are being broken. Open up your mouth and give God a pray. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Break it, break it. Break your chain. Break your chain. Break your chain. Break the chain. Break the chain. Break the chain. Come on, when you get to that third one, give God a praise. My chains are broken now. My chains are broken now. My chains are broken. My chains, my chains, my chains. No more excuses. My chains rush and my double hooks. My chain, my chain, my chain, my chain. Come on, my chain, my chain, my chain. Broken, 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 broken. No more excuses. No more excuses. No more excuses. Be on the house. I hear the 